Hey, welcome to Nurse Howie, and we're talking about ICU sedation, namely Presidex, one of the ICU drips we use for sedating patients, but there's many choices. This is one of the best. However, you're a registered nurse in the ICU, and you have a severely critically ill patient. Unfortunately, this patient is severely anxious, and she's getting less and less oxygen saturation per breath. What's worse is that the anxiety is making her breathing pattern less effective and as the monitors start beeping, you can see her become drowsier as she starts to lose consciousness. A colleague tells you that there is a message from the lab. Your patient is officially COVID positive. What do you do? First, you should anticipate that your patient is going to get intubated. But as her nurse, your first priority is to protect her airway in anticipation of the intubation procedure. At this point, you should be thinking, what can I do to rapidly ease my patient's anxiety as we can start to control her breathing pattern? Luckily, you remember that you have a staple drug in the ICU, Presidex, dexmedetomidine. According to some studies, Presidex is useful for sedation and anxiety, but not for deep sedation. It's important to consider this because ICU nurses are expected to sedate their patients enough to do the job. They don't want to oversedate their patients, but at the same time, they don't want their patients waking up and accidentally on purpose, ripping out the endotracheal tubes out of their throat, potentially making them die of respiratory failure. That sounds scary, but at the very least, the patient will be reintubated on a super emergent basis. And then you'll gain the ire of your colleagues and nurse manager for sure. Let's discuss Presidex's mechanism of action. Presidex, since dexmedetomidine is so hard to spell and say, is an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist. It boosts the receptor alpha-2 adrenergic. Not effective, it is not effective in producing deep sedation. It's very important to know this because it's like propofol light. I remember having someone on Presidex story time that was found down after an opioid overdose. They gave him Narcan in the ED and he came to me in the ICU under Presidex sedation. The instant I went to go put the blanket sheet over him he woke up swinging and fighting um, and he almost strangled me thank goodness the restraints were there um, on his wrists it just goes to show that your patients aren't really that sedated on Presidex so be careful now as a selective alpha 2 agonist Presidex also inhibits sympathetic nervous system resulting in an overall reduction in circulating plasma of norepinephrine and epinephrine now, the effect is dose-dependent. Patients receiving low doses of prolonged infusions of dexmedetomidine have a drop in systemic blood pressure. Now, this is believed to be due to occurrence of peripheral vasodilation once inhibition of sympathetic nervous response has been achieved. Now, self-note, does this make Presidex a poor choice for septic shock where SVR is already too low? We'll look into that later. But patients on Presidex have heart rates that are dose dependent. Again, that means too much dosing can potentially slow down their heart rate, causing bradycardia. Propofol, its meaner cousin, is also dose dependent towards blood pressure, hypotension. However, please also keep in mind that a recent study in 2018 showed that despite Presidex's effect causing bradycardia and hypertension, um, most namely systolic BP, it was not associated with significant changes in CI, which is cardiac index, pulmonary artery pressure, PAP, or CVP. In fact, it might actually be a benefit for patients with hypertension. Now, Presidex has a half-life of 9 minutes, which means that if you stop giving it, the remaining propofol in the body will reduce to half within 9 minutes, and then half of that, and then half of that. So Presidex makes metabolites in the urine. So make sure that your patient's kidneys aren't too damaged, such as from AKI, acute kidney injury, CKD, chronic kidney disease, or ESRD, and stage renal disease. Now, however, post-op AKI was reduced in patients that received Presidex, then nothing else for sedation. So this is a study from G et al. where they had a study of at least 1,133 subjects. Presidex may also help circulation. Now, Liu et al. in 2016 found differences in microvascular circulation, positing that Presidex was superior to propofol in improving microcirculation in cardiac surgery patients, which is a, the subject that we're focusing on on this study um, during the postoperative period. So other patients may not apply. But however, no optimum dosing is recommended yet.
So Presidex's other main advantage to other forms of sedation is that there seems to be a reduced incidence of delirium, which is a big problem in the ICU, versus remifentanil. Though I don't see remifentanil often due to its cost. Um, the precise mechanism of why Presidex is so effective at combating delirium is not fully understood. Also, it may be due to the fact that the benzodiazepines aren't being used. Now, benzos, besides the midazolam and fentanyl, aren't used commonly in the ICU due to its big effects of delirium, which the ICU already gives to our patients. So we will go over these in another video, but it's no surprise that Presodex also reduces the use of benzos just because it largely replaces them for pain. Well, I don't know about largely, that's more of a subjective term, but definitely something else to put in the Presodex's toolbox. But again, it's not complete. Remember, sedation is not pain control. So you have to have both in the ICU if you're sedating them. Never forget, never forget your patients have to be controlled with pain, from pain, while they're being sedated or, and or while they're being paralyzed. So never forget that as an ICU nurse. Now another blow to propofol, but Presidex seems to show post-op cardiac surgery patients an earlier excavation time of 57% versus 16.7%. That's huge. Um, in our s sensitive elderly patients, Chang et al. found that there were significant P equals 0 0.004 um, reduction in hospital mortality of 0.9% versus 2.83%. Now this is huge also because we are always looking to decrease mortality, aka death. Now the cost of Presidex is higher than propofol. So the cost of Presidex is higher than propofol. Unfortunately, in the author's institution, uh, 0.367 per microgram for dexmedetomidine versus 0.0113 per milligram of propofol at her institution as well. Um, they she found that there was that much of a price difference between Presidex and Propofol, but found also that a shorter length of stay and avoidance of adverse events set off the price of the Presidex. Although this may be a biased opinion. Um, shorter duration of mechanical ventilation and shorter ICU stays did say that they saved patients $2,600 overall, which offset the cost of Presidex over Propofol. So what is a summary? Presidex's adverse effect profile is similar to its competitors, i.e. propofol and midazolam, but its use has shown to decrease morbidity and mortality at a semi-significant rate. Um, its cost is high, but that expense can be replaced by the offset in savings due to the patient's faster recovery in cardiac surgery, which is again our demographic for this particular meta-analysis study. Uh, Weaknesses in the study involves that the paper largely studied perspective on effects of dexmedetomidine presidex on patients undergoing cardiac surgery, but there are different types of ICUs in different patients within those ICUs, which may not apply to whatever she's found in her meta-analysis. Now, my personal take is that I do like presidex, but it's not heavy. It just isn't. And if I have a patient that's struggling, fighting, and um, really bucking the vent, not working along with it, and that's causing overall stress um, to the patient and to me, um, but mostly to the patient because um, he or she can't get sedated enough uh, to be able to get the good treatment that they should be getting uh, while getting ventilated, then of course I think I would rather switch to propofol. But in all other regards, Presidex has shown to show a lot more positive advantages over propofol and Verset. Uh, so call to action, do you believe my assessment of Presidex was fair? If so, please go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your preferred way of sedation is and what experiences that you've had when you have been sedating patients with Presidex. Okay? All right, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Nurse Howie, and I will see you next time.